Hey guys, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on for more great content. Hello, this is Alexi B from G2 and today I will be doing a tutorial for in-game leading. To establish yourself as an in-game leader, I think one of the most important things is that you need to have in, like, control of the whole team and what's happening on the server. If every person is silent and doesn't give any input, it's really hard for any in-game leader in the world to make the best calls because you can never know what your opponent is doing on the other part of the map where you're not working and you can you can never have a hundred percent accurate read on what they're doing but if your teammates are vocal let's say uh my my player on a apps here in inferno is vocal and telling me about them already throwing two or three smokes towards apps what that tells me is that if we execute a late round it's gonna make it way easier because no one is gonna be holding like a one-way smoke on bike or anything like that because they already threw their smokes. So if my A apps player tells me, Alexi, they don't have any smokes on A, it's really easy to, for me to make a mid-game call. Okay, guys, let's fake towards B and go A. Or guys, let's just go A with our execute, whatever we have planned uh, previously. And most likely it'll be a good call because they'll, they are running out of equipment, you know what I'm saying? So the same thing is, if my a -ups player tells me, Alexi, they're saving all of their utility, or someone tells me they're saving all utility A, I don't think it's maybe not the smartest thing to go there. While being in control, you have to make everybody understand that they have, they have a job and they have some responsibilities in a team setting where they have to also help you. At the start of each round, no matter if it's T or CT side, depending on you can have a different player call CT sides, that, that's not unusual. But at least for T side, make sure you already have a plan. So you already call whether you're doing default, whether you're doing fast A control, whether you're doing fast B control, or if you want to explode, whatever it is. If you're playing a bit more slowly, so you don't instantly do an execute, you already kind of make an educated guess where you want to end up. So let's say it would be me here saying that Guys, I want to. I just want to play default at the start, so everybody knows what they kind of need to do and what their responsibilities are. Get ready to take mid control um, after we fought banana. Or get ready to explode out of apps mid to late game, uh, mid to late round. That already puts a thought in my teammate's head. So let's say I have a guy lurking banana, but I already told it on freestyle that after default I kind of want to explode apps maybe my B player he already thinks like okay I have to fall back from B to come and help the guys explode out of apps so maybe he's already making the right moves in order for him to sneak out or get out from banana and to come here on middle and help to to flash them out of apps for example because let's say I just said guys let's play default and I didn't say a single word after what might end up happening is that my banana player throws all of his flashes banana. He doesn't have flashes to help the players out of apps now later on, does he? Or he's throwing his nade, smoke, any everything. And late round scenarios come way harder when every player in the map already threw their stuff if, they, if I didn't ask them to hold it. And suddenly it's really hard for me to make a good mid to late game call because I can only see us having, let's say, one smoke, one molly, one flash, it, it's way harder. So as an in-game leader, you already have to prep the round a bit, even though you don't, let's say you don't want to play insanely fast round. So you want to play default. Let's say if you get entry or two, you can instantly change your plan or make a really easy call. Let's say the B side, you think it's empty after killing two guys, just go B and that's it, round over. But if no one is feeding you frags, so let's say you're playing default, no one is dying out of the CT, but you already made your, your team know that you want to explode out of apps late round, most likely now everybody's ready to do it, and it's much smoother uh, in terms of uh, you guys defaulting and what kind of e equipment everyone is saving. Make sure you already prep something at the freeze time, so if everything goes to plan, you can do the execute you want to. Third tip here, um, I guess just understanding your opponent and adapting. 
So let's say your opponent has been playing really passive on the on the CT side, for example. What it alerts to me is, okay, and they're just they just want us to execute on them, and they they think their side holds are good. But what it also tells me is that, okay, now that they played some passive rounds, I need to get ready if they want to change the pace. So every round I need to get prep my team and get ready for us to make sure that we're not sleeping if they want to do like a second mid push or a mid rush or a banana rush where they rush on us and we are not ready because they kept playing passive previously. So you just need to keep telling yourself to keep trying to think how they would approach the game or how they would approach these rounds and try to have good reads on what they're about to do. But at the same time, making sure that your pace, how you're playing on T-side, everything is fine. For example, let's say I start a game and we play really aggressive. What I'm going to do after a couple rounds is I'm going to expect the CTs to think that we play aggressive. But now I'm going to play a full passive round. And what, that, what, what that's going to make them do is they're going to start second guessing. And they're going to start using way more utility which they shouldn't be using, but they're only using it because we played so aggressive previously. So always keep adapting and always keep thinking about what your opponent might might be up to. Three mistakes uh, on, on people who think they're good IGLs, but they're kind of missing the point. I think I already told you guys some points where I'm, I'm telling you that if you're a T-side IGL and you're just telling your team that guys let's play default what's gonna most likely happen is all of your teammate teammates are gonna go to their spot they're gonna use the xu till they want and your mid to late game rounds are gonna look horrible or everyone is dying one on one so you gotta make sure you have control and you actually know what you want to do you cannot just go t side and keep saying okay guys let's go and do a b explosion and everybody's running here, trying to get close, you get naded down, you get whatever, and everything's messy. You have to think about the rounds, you have to think about how do you make it seem that you guys, guys are playing default or you guys are playing passive, but actually you're exploding somewhere. For example, you have a guy here, second mid, who is throwing a molly boiler, so they cannot, cannot have any information. And they will hear that there is a molly boiler, so maybe they're not expecting B hit. Maybe you have a guy, Molly Boiler, come here and smoke Arch or something. And now you have a Molly Boiler, a smoke here to block some vision. Maybe the, the Arch CT is going back to rotate to site. And he will have an e even longer rotation towards B site. So you gotta think ahead. You should watch some pro games on how, how teams are executing sites and what they do before they execute. Do they have a guy faking a bit of control before they do it? If they have, maybe you should think about also implementing it to your own game and to your own team. So don't just go in and try to think that you're the you're the best there is. Try to get some inspiration out of other IGLs, out of teams you like to watch, let's say. And you will most likely see these small details that are actually really key details in order for you to have good T sites or good explosions to catch your uh, opponent off guard you have to also know that you're you cannot be right all the time like you cannot um, you also have to take into account what your teammates are, are telling you about how your opponent is approaching the game or what they are doing if you could abuse something they're doing like let's say your um, banana player just tells you that they're not throwing anything b like they're just not throwing anything banana and we can just walk up Okay, let's walk up and make a, make a call out of it. Make a call out of what your teammates are telling you. And not just only stay inside your head, inside your own thoughts. Trust your teammates and listen to your teammates. What a lot of people are thinking about good city site setups. They're thinking about setups that, um, let's say you have an app set up here. What they are thinking about is that... Um, where everybody should be watching and what they should be doing and that's it but you also need to think about the other part of the map if you have a setup apps let's say you have your opera here you have your rifle guy here maybe he's here and maybe you have a third rifle guy watching middle what you need to understand is 
in order for them to come here into these positions the other part of the map needs to play accordingly so meaning that if these guys are playing aggro as well so you are trying to take banana and these guys just die they're never gonna come apps or if these guys are making too aggressive plays so let's say they didn't volley car and one of your teammates wants to peek here and now the t's flash over and maybe they kill your guy, guy car again they're not gonna come apps if your b players die so always think about the other part of the map B players should be plus passive, they should be flashing for fake or maybe just taking a tiny peek like this just to annoy them or just to see that they're not exploding B. But you should never go too aggressive because the aggressive part is here already. You want these guys to get the entry. So don't play too aggressive on the other part of the map. Same thing goes for, let's say you're playing three guys here. Let's say your Oper is, is playing here, you have one guy playing here behind sandbags and one guy flashing so three guys here what your a guys should be doing they should make sure that the t's cannot rush a maybe they have a guy who's smoking here he's flashing over just to fake that you are peeking boiler and now you go two guys pit you just run two guys here one guy's holding a smoke let's say they execute ready to throw a one-way smoke and one guy's just hiding headshot and the only thing you're hoping for is the T's will go for banana control and die to the AWP uh, slash rifle bait setup here. So you get the entries and the other part of the map is playing passive. So if the T's want to react, guys, they're 3B, we need to rush A. And now, now they're coming A trying to find you. You're already tucked in in really good positions, ready to throw one ways, ready to play off of each other. So always think about the other part of the map when you're doing any setup you want to. That was my tutorial, thanks for watching and subscribe to Betways Esports for more G2 content.